All right, we're heading into Wilmington for another day of HVAC service calls. So we'll see what all we can get into today. Hopefully something interesting. I decided to check on our little Heil install from the other day and uh, looking for the mechanical final because there wasn't a rough end for this job. And as you see, there's our signature of approval. So we are good to go. All right, we got ourselves a Goodman GSH series from 2006, the 13-seer heat pump and a phone call. I'll be right back. All right, we're adding some refrigerant on the unit. That's a little low, then we're gonna go check out so we can find a leak. I think it's probably in the evaporator coil. We should be looking for our 20 degree superheat. We got 34. It is charging though, so it's not exactly, it's really 34, it's a little higher than that. We're putting uh, almost a pound in there. So we're gonna fill it up a little bit more and see what's going on. All right, now we're looking over our Goodman evaporator where I've seen many leaks over the years. And uh, I've checked through there a little bit and haven't found anything yet. But some of the trouble spots that I've seen are these braze joints on these U tubes and uh, the part where the capillary tubes go into the little head down there and of course the compression fitting but so far those have been good so I'm trying to open her up and take a little bit better look at it I'm using my crusty leak detector let's see what we can find it may not be in here but usually it is well I checked the evaporator I didn't see or find any leaks with the detector, I'm going to open up the blower compartment, look underneath the coil down there to see if I see anything that would lead me to believe I missed something like an oil smut stain or something like that. I always check these tubes here. They tend to rub against each other. And I've seen a couple of them, uh, one especially that rubbed together and the refrigerant leaked and froze and there's a block of ice around it. But it actually held 20 pounds, that block of ice. But that's what I check for. All right, we take a look at the bottom of the evaporator. No leaks here either. We have some rust marks up here. Uh, I always check around there, but nothing, uh, nothing showing here. Just a little deteriorated here on the galvanized plates. Looking for the formulary corrosion. So I guess now we'll move on to probably the accumulator, heat charging port outside. I've seen those uh, leak as well. I'm really surprised though. So we'll move on out there. All right, took so the top off. We're about to check inside, see if we can find some leaks in there. Or a leak. Pull the power. Uh, I got a little tape on the good one unit here because they tend to flop out when you take the top off. So it kind of holds them in place. So we're going to take that top off and take a look. Well, it's hard to see down there at the accumulator, but the base of the accumulator, there's a bubble that's growing. It's bad news. It's quite large now. So what we have is a very small leak on the accumulator going toward the reversing valve, the inlet port. But it's getting larger and larger. All right, back in suburbia for another day of accumulator changeouts. So we'll get down to business. Okay, now we're recovering the gas out of this big Goodman unit. Putting my new drum. It's really nice. Carrier Enterprise is running a special where you get your reclaim tanks for free. So I went in there and took mine as fast as I could go to get a new one. I don't know how long they're going to do that, but that was awesome. Now we're coming down. She's pulling down on the liquid side. We'll probably open up the other valve in a minute. And uh, then we'll get to work. All right, we recovered all of our gas. I have the other accumulator disconnected, and we're about to fit the new one up. And then we'll flow nitrogen while we braze. All right, we got everything set up. We got the accumulator sitting in there. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of the heat trap on top of it so we don't mess up the paint. Couplings on the uh, outlet line to the compressor. Coupling on the inlet from the reversing valve. We sleeve the sampling tube and heat charging port. We're about to open up the nitrogen and brace her in. What we're gonna do, we're gonna send the nitrogen through the gauges. Put it into the low side, force it back through the heat charging port exit and the high side. So I have two exit points, so we get free flow through there so we don't have any buildup. And the pipes that I sweated off of, the old accumulator over there, I desuited with myself since I could reach the insides of the pipe. Alright, we also uh, beefed up the heat charging port there because I've seen a few of them break off so I re-brazed it in a manner I can be more confident in. So let's get started. 
Okay, what I did after I finished uh, brazing in the accumulator, I'm gonna come out here, I put a couple bins on the liquid line coming in, put a nice upright dryer coming into the unit. Uh, since we did a major repair, we always put the, replace the dryer. Okay, I'm gonna braze that up and we'll check it with nitrogen. All right, I put 150 pounds of nitrogen on it. I got soap on every joint that I worked on and some other ones, just for kicks. Down there where that heat charging port passes through there. Right there. Everything looks good. We were at we've been 150.5 and 0.6 back and forth the whole time we've been doing this. That gives me uh, what I did is I hooked up the superheat meter because it's digital and it's to the tenth. It's a lot more uh, accurate than the gauges, so I can look at it and I can really see if it's falling, uh, which gives me a lot clearer picture whether or not I have a leak. So we've been in the 150.5, 150.6. We must be right on the brink there because we keep going back and forth, back and forth. All right, I bleed all the nitrogen off the system. I took her up to 311 pounds because it looked like there was a leak. So I isolated my superheat subcooling gauge and disconnected all my other uh, <clears throat> gauge hoses so I could see if it was the system or my hoses. So I had my gauge hose took from here to the superheat subcooling meter, which is not sitting here anymore. And I shut this. And both of them were on 311 pounds. And my gauge, or my subcooling gauge, dropped to 310 pounds. When I opened it back up, it rose to 311. So it ruled out the system and told me that my hose may be leaking a little bit. Um, it was a really small leak. But now uh, we're going to put the fan wires back on before I start pulling a vacuum. And we have... Our black, which is our collar, be going to the contactor here. Keep in mind this will be the opposite side as the run side, which is usually red. You see the red wire going down to the run side of the contactor right here, and then jumpers from the <clears throat> from the contactor over to the capacitor which is where we'll put the fan run side there it is and all we have left is our fan starting terminal there we are all right and now we're going to start the vacuum all right pulled a vacuum on it and now we are putting the charge in uh, sorry, my camera died for a while, so I had to recharge it. I'm uh, putting it on liquid right now, but we, we've put in about all she's going to take. I'm going to have to uh, put the rest in while it's running. It's cooled off quite a bit here, so it's not taking charge quite as well as it was before. Our defrost board, our capacitor. Thank goodness for Goodman. All right, all done here. Uh, I put some leak lock on the caps just in case. Put brass caps with O-rings on all the uh, <coughs> gauge ports. Uh, Superheat's down to 7, calling for about 8 or so, uh, so we're in the ballpark there. Rather be a, a little overcharged and a little undercharged with Goodman, our dryer. Uh, and we're good to go. Just talked to old Fritz, and he's going to send me some information on a brand new tool. And this is a secondary reminder, in case you're listening now, Fritz, don't forget to send me the information on the tool. I look forward to seeing it. Alright everybody, we'll see you next time. Oh, where's all my service call money going? It's going into my big bag.